a modern Formula One car has about 25,000 components. And every two weeks, each team is building about 5,000 new ones. It's astonishing. Ross Braun once said that Formula One wasn't about a driver's competition, it was one great big engineering competition. And that's quite right. And every week, even though they've built all these components, not all of them will make it through to the car, but 5 to 10% of the car will be different from the race before. Must be great if you're the engineer and you see that happen after it. And the reason they can do that is because of the application of computer-aided design and 3D printing. The data coming back from the car, remember, are being sent straight back to the factory as well as to the pits. And when they get back to the factory, you can modify the design of the component in real time and then print something in three dimensions and add it to the model, the 60% 60, 60 size model which you have to use in a wind tunnel to change the design of the car and, and, and watch it behave. And in some teams, they have a virtual wind tunnel where they can put virtual designs to see how it behaves. You can even print the trophy. Or a whole race car. But this technology is appearing now in my daily life. You can print surgical instruments. These, um, are from a, a recent American paper, printed in 90 minutes, costing 10% of the cost of the stainless steel ones and purpose designed. This is a simple instrument, of course. But it needn't be. There's a British company currently making 3D printed automatic suture devices whose next step is to miniaturize them so that they can be used endoscopically instead of having to use two instruments to suture something, you just need to use one. And um, both British and American companies are, um, and hospitals too, are designing three-dimensional instruments, 3D printing instruments, which can be used prototypically in the lab and then um, rapidly transferred into real life. At Great Ormond Street, we use them for printing organs, same technology, and for rehearsing procedures. This little girl was holding her trachea, printed here, and we were able to rehearse uh, how that procedure is done before doing it in real life to make it safer, quickly. Here's another patient of mine whose trachea we printed in three dimensions in a new material which at 37 degrees centigrade behaves like a human trachea. And that meant that I could rehearse the operation that we intended to do and provide the data set to a colleagues at UCL to print uh, a stent that we could use to hold that um, uh, trachea open. Rapid prototyping, personalized medicine. Using the same data models that come from a Formula One car, we've also been able to use three-dimensional data sets from CT and the mathematics of airflow, flow dynamics, just to use the data to look at the potential airflow through the trachea without having to look down the, the child's throat or give it an anesthetic and non-invasively follow it up using exactly the same mathematics as F1. Um, 